A couple of days ago, Intel released their new i9 flagship CPUs. Well, I don't have access to any of that, so let's build a Ryzen 7 system instead. Since Ryzen 7's release back in March, it has continued to impress, especially when it comes to performance and multi-threaded workloads. Single-threaded workloads, it does lag behind chips like the 7700K, but that's really not what it's designed for. It's designed to give scalable compute power to the average person. My brother-in-law is entering his final year of college. Now, he's been laptop bound for the last three years on a Dell Inspire on 15. Solid laptop, but he's finding it's not nearly enough power for what he does. He's a programming major, and Really, he needed something that would scale a little bit better with the things that he's doing. Let's see what we put together. I've got a Ryzen 7 1700, 3 gigahertz, 8 core, 16 thread CPU, an MSI X370 SLI Plus ATX motherboard, 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 3200 memory, an EVGA 650 80 plus gold power supply provides all the power we could ever want. And to cool this monster off, we've got a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, one of my favorite CPU coolers. Fans are a little bit of a budget choice. We went with the Arctic F12 120mm fans, which are PWM controlled. We've got six of them total in this build. On the Cooler Master 212, we've actually got a push-pull configuration going on. And he was a little undecided on a graphics card, so he's going to borrow my GTX 1070 to see exactly what he wants. What he told me was he wants something between a 1050 Ti and a 1080 Ti. We'll see what he ends up with. Keeping this build looking good is the Fractal Design Defined C Tempered Glass Edition. Plenty of cable management in the rear, supports two 3.5 inch drives, three 2.5 inch drives, 320 millimeter fans in the front, two in the top, and one in the rear. For storage, we have two Samsung 850 Evo 500GB SSDs and a single 2TB Western Digital Black. Want to see what it takes to put something like this together? Well, let's go to the video. So this is the first Ryzen system I've ever built, and I've got to say I'm really impressed with the platform, especially for something that is brand new to the market. Uh, they absolutely knocked this out of the park. The MSI motherboard is a joy to work with. The BIOS are very simple. The overclocking was literally three clicks and I'm done. A little bit of fine tuning on the back end, but actually getting the overclock set, not difficult at all. Now, I'm quite obviously a fan of the uh, Fractal Design Define S. Uh, the Define C is, that case, just taken to another level, minus as much water cooling support. Uh, it's a little shorter and narrower. Uh, that being said, for an air cooling case, this is fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of little touches in this case that really, really make it nice to work with. Uh, things like a cutout for the front audio panel cable to come through rather than just draping across the bottom of the motherboard tray. Speaking of overclocking, this did very, very well. I managed a 3.875 gigahertz on the Ryzen 7 1700 with just a 1 1.35 volt on the core. Even with that overclock, the chip managed to stay nice and cool, idling at about 35 degrees Celsius, and after a 12 hour IDA64 stress test, peaked at only 65 and a half degrees. Very quiet, the fans stay under 1100 RPMs at all times. 
At the beginning of the video, I mentioned the G-Skill RAM. We did buy 3200 megahertz rated memory. I was only able to get it to post with 2933, even with the latest BIOS. Uh, I know Ryzen sometimes struggles to get beyond that. That was the case for us. This being my first encounter with Ryzen, speed and stability really impressed me, especially for a new platform. Now, if you didn't get a tour of my Xeon 12 core workstation, I'll link it in the card right up here. And that is my right side this time. I got it right, it's on my left. Ha! If you didn't manage to catch that video, I built that primarily for workstation-like tasks, which is actually where Ryzen really excels. Uh, my workstation, for example, managed a 1695 score in Cinebench, I believe is what it ran. This edged it out, just barely, after overclock, at a 17.05. I threatened my brother-in-law to lower that overclock down just a smidge. He didn't like that idea. For gaming not being the primary focus on this machine, it certainly handled it well. GTA 5 managed 109 frames per second on average with very reasonable 1 and 0.1% lows. Doom also managed to pull off a 185 mark, also with ultra settings in Vulkan. All the titles shown here were tested at 1080p with very high and ultra settings. I tested at 1080 because that's actually the monitors that he has right now. I wanted to show what the 1070 would do, again because he's undecided on his graphics card. This machine would be more than capable of handling 1440p and may even be able to jump to 4K depending on the game and with some lowered settings. Build total on this was just over $1,560, and I'll put links to everything that I can in the video description. I included the GTX 1070 EVGA SC card as I wanted to give a comparison to what this is. I bought this used before the Ethereum craze hit. So what do you guys think of the build? Is there anything you'd do differently? What graphics card do you think you should go with? Let me know in the comments down below. And on your way there, drop me a like. And if you want to see future videos, the subscribe button's right next to it. As always, thank you everyone for watching. Last week I passed 500 subscribers. I know in this day and age it doesn't sound like a lot. To me, that's kind of a big deal. Thank you all for your support and kind words down in the comments. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. You're going to get some hints to some upcoming builds. And I guarantee next week you're going to want to watch that one. So stick around for that. And again, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Beer. That's a really good red. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Laurelwood. Good brewery. Eugene. Look them up if you haven't already. Good.